everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial. That's right, for 2017, we're doing weekly Adobe Illustrator tutorials. I haven't done Adobe Illustrator tutorials in years, but they're back. Maybe they're back to stay. I'm going to do them for a good long while, that's to say the least. Today, we're going to talk about creating this thing. This is the Penrose Triangle, the impossible triangle. It's an illusion. A lot of fun to draw. In fact, with a project like this, sometimes I'll just sketch it out to kind of like conceptualize it all in my mind before I jump into Adobe Illustrator and really begin playing with the paths and the guides and everything else that we're going to do. We're going to jump into Adobe Illustrator and take a look at how to create this triangle, how I like to create it. I like to create it in Illustrator the way that I draw it on paper. And here's how I do that. So here we are. We've got kind of a cavalcade of Penrose triangles here. There's one of them right there in the middle. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to shut this layer off. Let's not be distracted by any of that stuff. I'm going to create a new layer here, and I'm going to name it Guides. Because the very first thing I do is create a series of guides. By the way, the document that I'm using here today is 3940 by 2560. That's the size of the document. If you want to follow along, it's a little important to get the size right because of some of the transforming and moving things around that we're going to be doing in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead first and foremost and set the foreground color back to just a white like that. And I'm going to click and hold on what would be the rectangle tool. We want to get down here to the star tool. I'm going to drag out a star. You think it's star. Why star when we're drawing a triangle? Well, because if you hit the down arrow key one, two times, look at that. We're left with the triangle. Hold down the shift key and let go. And we get a nice big triangle kind of like that. Now up here, I have my align selections right there. And right now it's align to selection, which, um, isn't going to do anything. I need to go align to artboard, and now I can just align this to the horizontal and vertical centers, just like that. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just swap my foreground, or my, my fill and my, my stroke here by hitting that little arrow key. There we go. Great. Uh, I should just have a nice solid white as my stroke, which is great. I'm going to go to my stroke panel here and set the weight of the stroke to 15 points. This way it's nice and big. We can see what we're working with. We can see what we're dealing with. Everything looks great. Now we're going to begin creating a series of guides. Here's how I do this. I select the entire triangle. Make sure the entire thing is selected. Hit Command or Control C to just copy this bad boy to our clipboard. Very important. Now we're going to go Effect distort and transform and choose transform. I'm going to choose to preview this and I'm going to make one copy. Now I'm going to shift this horizontally, probably I want to say like negative 200, maybe a little bit more. Let's go negative 250. Yeah, something like that looks good. Let's go negative 250. And whatever we do here, we're going to do uh, for the other side as well. You'll see what I mean. We just want to remember that negative 250. Hit OK. Now that we have this double triangle, it still is just our single path with an appearance applied to it. So if we double click to open the appearance panel, I can see here, let me just close down just this huge amount of information here. I have this transform applied as a sort of live effect. It is, in fact, a live effect. It's an appearance applied to that path. We want to make it another path. So we're going to go object expand appearance. Take that appearance and expand it out to a path. Voila, two paths. Great. This is grouped together. Um, typically, we want to ungroup it. What we, re we really don't have to here. We're going to go uh, window and choose Pathfinder. We want to open our Pathfinder panel and choose this little icon here. It's the minus back option. It's going to get rid of everything but this one sort of piece of the triangle. Now, remember, we copied our triangle to our clipboard. We'll go ahead and paste it in place by going edit, paste in place. Well, I'm sorry, not paste in place, paste in front. We want to paste this guy right in front. And the hotkey is Command or Control F. We'll be using that as we continue on in this tutorial. And there we go. The whole triangle is back. We need to do this again. Effect Transform. And we need to push the horizontal 250 to the right. So I'm just going to go 250 positive. Not negative 250, but 250 plus. We're going to check Preview on. You can see it move to the other side. Great. Hit OK. And we're going to do that same thing. Object, Expand Appearance, voila, and minus back. Now, once more, Command or Control F to paste that in place. Effect, Transform. We can fly through this quick. Set horizontal to zero. We want to go negative 250 on the vertical. Preview it. Looks great. Hit OK. Object, Expand, Appearance, and Minus Back. All right, so now that we have our first three shapes all overlapping like this, we want to make guides out of these. So what I'm going to do is I've selected them all just like that. We're on our Guides layer. We, we named it Guides. We're going to go view. I have smart guides turned on. I also have snap to point turned on. This is going to be important in just a moment. But for now, we want to go guides, make guides. And you can see I've got these guides showing up over my dark blue background. And now that we have our guides, we're ready to make even more guides. But we need a triangle that is exactly 
the size of this innermost triangle. We're going to use the pen tool here. And when I hover, you can see because Smart Guides is turned on, I get a little indicator that says, look, intersect, which means that I'm going to drop an anchor point exactly precisely where those two paths intersect. I click great. Let's drop one down here where the paths intersect, here where the paths intersect, and then here on anchor, it's going to close our triangle, and we have a perfect triangle, the exact size of that innermost triangle. Now we want to copy this triangle to our clipboard by hitting Command or Control C, and we're going to go through that whole song and dance of transforming once again. Effect, transform. This time we're going to preview this. I'm only going to go like negative maybe 150. Yeah, 150 will probably work. Maybe like 170. Let's go 170. That looks good. Hit OK. Object, expand appearance, and minus back. We're going to hit Command or Control F to paste our little triangle back in place. Effect, transform. Let's go 170 to the sides now. So I'm going to go 0. Tick on preview so we can see what we're doing. Negative 170. Looks good. Hit OK. Object, expand appearance, minus back. Command or Control F to paste it in front. Effect, transform. It feels like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Probably because you are. Preview is turned on. There we go. Bumped it out to the right. Hit OK. Here we go again, object expand appearance, minus back. And now we select all of these shapes and we go view, guides, make guides. And now before we have our guides completed, we need to just draw a couple little lines. So a line right between those two points, these two points, and those two points. Again, the pen tool will save the day. We can just click right there, anchor point to anchor point and hit, see how the pen tool wants to keep drawing a path? Just hit enter or return. It's gonna just sort of finalize that path. Anchor point to anchor point, enter or return. Anchor point to anchor point, enter or return. All right, let's select these three bad boys and go view, guides, make guides. All right, so this, this is the final set of guides that we need to draw the Penrose triangle. Go ahead and select between the eyeball and the colored bar here to just lock the guides layer. Create a new layer. We're going to name this layer triangle. And we're going to use the pen tool and remember, View, Smart Guides, and Snap to Point are both turned on. This is going to be helpful here. We want to begin drawing the first side of our Penrose Triangle. So hover right here. We're going to get Anchor. We're going to go Anchor to Anchor. Come down to here. I'm going to choose Anchor again. And then I'm going to bring this all the way into right here. There's an Anchor, so I know I'm going there. Here i got to line up with the intersection. Great. And then I come all the way out to here, Anchor. And then all the way back up to here, Anchor. First piece of our Penrose Triangle. Now I'm going to select down here where, oh, see I hit guide. I'm going to hit command or control Z to undo that. So I want guide. I want to land on the anchor point, anchor point over to this anchor point here, up to this anchor point right here. I'm leaving some open space there down to this intersection, down to this anchor point, out to this anchor point, down to that anchor point. Great. That's the second piece of the Penrose triangle. Now let's begin right out here. So we're going to go anchor point to anchor point, down to anchor point to intersection, to anchor point, down here, to anchor point, and up to anchor point to complete the shape. This is up on our triangle layer, so I can shut my guides off, and I can see what I have. Now, it looks a little funky on the edges because of the mitering, or the cap, the corner, excuse me, on our stroke. So I can just select all of these and just choose rounded corner, and I get a better idea of what I'm working with here. Um, but really what we want to do is go ahead and apply some gradient fills to uh, our shape. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open this up. You can see I've got three paths. I've got this one, this one, this one. I'm going to begin with this one, and I'm going to double-click to open my swatches panel. And here on my swatches panel, I have a bunch of different colored gradients that I made. I think I'm going to go with the orange one. So I'm going to select that orange gradient, and you can see the stroke is active, so it's going to fill the stroke with an orange gradient. I don't want that. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z. In fact, because the stroke is active, I'm going to hit this little slash icon up here in the color panel to just make sure I get rid of the stroke altogether. And then what I'm going to do is over here in the swatches panel, I'm going to select the fill swatch. Once that is activated, when I go ahead and hit the gradient, now the shape itself will fill with the gradient. I'm going to use the gradient tool here, and I'm going to drag out from this corner because I definitely want the darkest part of the gradient over here. So I'm going to drag it just straight this way. There we go. So I've got a little bit of darkness, and then the rest of my shape is pretty bright. Maybe a little tiny bit of darkness touches that outside corner. Great. All right, let's select uh, this shape right here. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select the stroke. I'm going to hit any of these slashes. Any of these slashes you can hit gets rid of the stroke. Select the fill to activate that. We're going to go back to the same exact gradient. Grab your gradient tool, and we're going to drag a gradient out of this little corner area. There we go. And last but not least, we'll grab the last piece of the Penrose triangle. Make sure we have our stroke active. Hit any slash to just get rid of that stroke. Select the fill. 
same gradient goes into there. Grab the gradient tool, and we're going to pull the darkest part of the gradient right out of that corner of our Penrose triangle, just like that. And if you want, I mean, if you want to make things interesting, you can always, you know, extend the gradients a little bit longer, uh, make, you know, one side much darker than the rest of the sides. That can also help you have a little bit more of sort of this depthy depth perception um, effect. And I'll take this guy here, this one here. I'll make this one a little bit darker, but not quite as dark. So I'll start back here and maybe do something like that. So I've got three sides of my Penrose triangle that are all definitely different colors. Uh, you can do that. You could just straight up use different color gradients on every side. If I wanted to go like a kind of pinkish red there, I don't actually don't really like that. Uh, maybe like blue or something and mix things up. I don't know. Point is here, if I zoom out, we're really getting and we're really going to see the three dimensionality, that optical illusion that the Penrose triangle is known for. Uh, and you can go and you can mess with gradients. You can just keep fussing with this till the cows come home. Uh, you can really perfect it and uh, do as much or as little with this effect as you want and really, you know, get a, a really cool looking graphic. And like I did, you can, you know, you can use all kinds of different colored versions of the triangle. And I got a pinkish reddish one, a green one, a, a yellow one, a purple, blue, all kinds of different things. So that's going to be pretty much it for this one. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please hit the little like button down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. That way you never miss any of these videos uh, in the future. Also, drop a comment below if you enjoyed the tutorial, if you learned something new, something like that. Or if you have an idea for an upcoming Illustrator tutorial, something you would like to learn, something you would like me to cover, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm always looking through the comments, and I love the suggestions that come out of the comment section. Such good stuff. So... For the Penrose Triangle, the impossible triangle, the illusion, this little guy here that I somehow was able to sketch out with pen and pencil, that is it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.